What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to go over how to get your BIS weapon pretty much within one day. You can get most of it while leveling and not have to worry about it. I'm also going to talk about your PvP BIS trinket really quickly and how you can get that just while you're leveling also just without even thinking about it. This is going to make your experience at level 70 a lot easier and this weapon actually will be full on your BIS weapon for the entire phase and then it'll be comparable for your BIS weapon in tier five content. This is going to be the Drake fist hammer moving on to dragon maw. So as you upgrade it, of course you'll have to be level 70 to upgrade it, but it's very easy to get this weapon, especially if you do it early on before everybody else starts farming out the areas that you actually need to farm. Now for reference to just let you guys know really quickly how well I know this farm. Uh, I have farmed this mace three times actually here here and also on the beta original beta realm just while i was leveling it was very easy to get and i pretty much got it without even thinking about anything just while leveling the top end of drake fist hammer the first version of it is 296 and to make this you need to have 20 primal fires 20 primal earths 12 Eternium bars and 8 Corium bars. Now the Eternium bars will come pretty much as you're leveling up mining if you keep mining. And so the first thing I really want to stress to people that is probably going to be really, really helpful is keep mining while you level. Now PvP is not opening for like the first two weeks or the arena season. Even actually just within leveling, you will fully have enough of your materials to make this weapon and enough materials to make the figurine Knight's Eye Panther trinket because you'll only really need the hardened animantite from that. So to make this first version of the weapon, you just need to get the Eternium bars and the Corium bars. And each of these are made from two of each of the ore. And Eternium ore just comes pretty much from every other type of ore. It's that like rare type of ore you get while mining adamantite, fell iron, or hardened adamantite. You actually get this pretty frequently, so it's very, very easy to get. And then Corium bars are kind of a lot more rare, but I've found the easiest way for me to find them is either running your solo runs in mana tombs or the best place I've found for mining in general personally is Netherstorm. And this there's two real really good mining routes. Netherstorm where you fly all the way around the edges of Netherstorm. And there's two amazing spots here in Netherstorm. The Mana Forged Era, which has a mine underneath it, and the Mana Forged Ultras, which has a mine underneath it also. Now both of these mines will every time have three nodes in them. You might think that open world farming is going to be very rough because of all of the people farming, but if you get to it very quickly, it should be pretty easy. And generally, no matter what, even as a rogue, you can usually farm any like caves pretty easily. Most people have to go in and kill every single mob moving through to be able to get to the nodes. You only need to kill the mobs right next to the node. And then there's this one little spot right here, the Sokrathar's seat, that usually has two nodes, and then past that, it's all the way around. The second mining route that is the best mining route is to mine all the way around Nagran in between your mana tombs farms. So do your five lockouts, which usually only takes one to two minutes. I do have a video fully covering all of the different mining lockouts in all of the dungeons, and I'll have a link to that in the description but you do your quick lockouts and then you go to Nagrand and do a loop around Nagrand. I expect this to be the most popular route, so farming in Nagrand will probably be pretty hard even early on. It's just gonna be a lot of people there. Everyone's gonna be farming it. So this is pretty much if you need to actually do any of the mining farming yourself, but if you keep mining, you should honestly get pretty much all of this yourself while leveling. One thing to note is you probably wanna have plus mining to gloves, just have a pair of gloves in your inventory. If you're not fully dungeon leveling, you will absolutely get all of the mats while leveling. The next things you need are the primals, primal fires and primal earths. Do not farm earth elementals. You're gonna get all of your primal earths just from leveling mining. 
all of them and some no matter what you will pretty much get all of them and more some nodes you'll get an entire primal just from some normal nodes while you're mining so you do get actually primal fires from mining as well just at a much much smaller rate from my experience so far on the beta i have been able to always get all of my primal earths and have about 29 primal earths by the time i have gotten the rest of the mats and I will have farmed about two primal fires in that time. So don't worry about farming your primal earths, just get them through your mining. The only thing you actually have to farm, really the only thing you have to farm in this entire hammer for the first version of the hammer is going to be your primal fires. Now the best place I have found is definitely Scald here in Blade's Edge. It is up here in the top of Blade's Edge if you look. You can also go to Elemental Plateau here in Nagrand, or you can go out to Shadow Moon Valley. And here in Shadow Moon Valley, there's actually both Elementals, Fire and Earth Ellies. But the highest drop rate actually I've seen here is in Blade's Edge. It might be exactly the same drop rate, but also the mobs are lower level. They're level 67, very easy to kill and very close to each other. So you can clear out this entire area within minutes and then they will start to respawn the respawn rate is pretty high the only thing that's going to be complicated with farming your primal fires is that they might start being farmed out a lot of people are going to be wanting to farm primal fires and that's why you want to do this early on because this is absolutely the stopgap of farming this mace it will be the primal fires so it's an easy way to go farm out some experience if you're leveling. You can do this for honestly two to five hours. It depends on what your level is and your gear level already. So this is definitely what I would suggest as the best spot. Then if you go to Elemental Plateau, expect that to be farmed out pretty significantly, mainly because one, everyone knows about that area. Everyone is gonna know about every elemental farming spot. Two, the elementals are higher level, harder to kill. And three, people are gonna be there farming it pretty significantly, especially early on, right as druids hit level 68 and can fly up there, right as people get their flying mount, they're gonna fly up there. And actually you can glitch your way up there unless they patch it. Uh, Fake Cutie actually already made a video. You don't even need to have a flying mount or anything like that. You can glitch your way up there. So this was pretty much just a really long winded way of saying that you can farm Drakefist Hammer within one day very easily. You don't even need to farm any of the mining materials if you keep mining while you're leveling. So try not to drop mining early and pre-level blacksmithing or anything like that. You might as well just keep mining while you level and then just get rid of it when you need to make your mace pretty much. And then actually for the figuring Night's Eye Panther, all of the actual ore you've already gotten will be able to go towards prospecting, which should give you two Night's Eyes. And then all you need from there are gonna be two Primal Shadows, which right as you start out playing or start out leveling in TBC, if you're not in dungeons, you're gonna have a quest that's gonna send you here to Void Ridge. This is the spot to farm your Primal Shadows. And it is very quick to farm the two Primal Shadows you need. It pretty much takes about 20 minutes to farm it out if you don't have any competition expect a lot of competition so it should take you like an hour or two to just be able to get all of the mob tags that you need there are also elementals down here but those guys actually don't drop the primals or the motes of shadow maybe they do but we tried it for an hour and it actually never dropped any of them so right here in void ridge and then the figurine night's eye panther actually is an insane trinket 54 static attack power which is slightly less than bloodlust brooch which gives you 72 but the proc or the actually on use is 320 attack power instead of bloodlust brooch is 278 Although the trinket does have a one minute longer cooldown from two minutes to three minutes, the real huge thing is the increase in your effective stealth level, which is massive in PvP. Season one, you pretty much will get the sap opener on anyone outside of people using a pre-vanish or perception. You can pretty, like no matter what, you will win that opener every single time. So almost every rogue that actually takes PvP serious will want to be getting this.
And that is all, guys. That is a quick wrap up of how to farm your two of your best items right out of the gate, day one, as you hit level 70 or as you're leveling up to level 70. Now, I will have a ton of videos covering anything you need to know for rogues in TBC. So, of course, make sure to like and subscribe. I kind of rambled a bit on this one and I meant to make it very short. So, sorry for that, but I hope to see you guys all on the next one. Have a good one and good luck out there.